Hello and welcome to this week's Excursion into Action. And we have found ourselves in 1965. Um, and the picture is Genghis Khan, spelt with a G, pronounced J, Genghis Khan. I didn't know this till I started researching this picture. And it is, without doubt, um, oh, it's a, from an action perspective, it's full on. And we're going to have a look at that action um, during the course of this. But just from a general overview perspective, nowadays, if uh, a movie is being pitched for the purpose of um, telling a story, an important social story, an important historical story, the casting of that movie is very, very dependent on getting getting things right, getting the, ethnic, the ethnicity of the actor correct, getting the locations correct. Do you know all of that sort of stuff? That's massively important. Here, in 1965, it's as though the producers have said, well, just cast box office. doesn't matter about... Uh, where the where the actors are from or who they are their major concern is just getting bums on seats in the cinema and consequently well they've cut a few corners when it comes to that sort of thing uh genghis khan is played by omar sharif okay 10 years before genghis khan was played by john wayne so that's actually come on leaps and bounds in consideration of of the character um a number of the sidekicks in the picture the supporting cast who are supposed to be from either uh the uh, the mongol empire or indeed um from the chinese empire well they're played by james mason is one of them. I don't understand why there has to be so many difficulties. James Mason uh, is uh, is playing one of the characters, um, and um, also the Chinese emperor is played by Robert Morley. Robert Morley. I want you to check that out uh, if anybody's familiar with them. Um, uh, in fact, he played Cliff Richard's father in The Young Ones, if you get a chance to see that. That's Robert Morley. Uh, whew, fabulous casting. Bizarre, but fabulous nonetheless. So, once you get... The, forget about the casting, right? I just wanted to mention that on the basis that I thought it was quite amusing. However, the movie itself is a really very loose-based adaptation of actual history and by loose I mean really loose so they've decided that they're going to take a bunch of other boxes and most importantly is action now action for action's sake as many of us will know having watched pictures over the years doesn't always work you know you get two beats of dialogue and then whack an action sequence thrown in because picture's not going to run the right length if we don't do something about it we need an action scene just to fill out some stuff they haven't done that here but what they have done um is they've realized that action is massively important and they brought on board you know at the time the one man who was probably responsible for more successes action wise than anybody else they brought on bob simmons Bob Simmons as... And also, Bob very rarely got a credit as stunt coordinator. It was always action designer or action arranger. Or in this instance, action by. Action by Bob Simmons. Um, make it sound like a fragrance. Action by Bob Simmons. You, you, you'd wear that. I would. Make me, uh, make me smell decidedly action-packed i'd have that if that was a consideration so they brought him on uh he in turn has said right um i'm gonna need 
some serious quality uh, performers to come with me. And he's brought Alf Joint as a key member. He's brought a couple of other members too. Jack Cooper's in there and a couple of other people have come along. Um, but primarily, it's Alf. And Alf will be there for a couple of moments that we'll see. The remaining action is horse-based. And all of it, with the exception of maybe one or two, and again, we'll point that out, but all of it is down to a Yugoslavian stunt team um, that Bob is familiar with, um, has sought out prior to going, and then when he gets there, there are a number of action extras as they would be referred to today guys who have you know maybe a bit more knowledge of a of a sword than your average joe in the street so in that case that they are then worked with uh by alf and uh, and jack and they they put these guys together so that they can create um a decent enough look on screen a passable look on screen as the camera's panning across that the audience will go oh these are the soldiers that's all it needs but it needs a helping hand from the stunt professionals so with that in mind it is also useful to know that the nature of the horse falls is extremely complicated horse falls are dangerous you know they they always were they're always made to look very exciting but the horse in many situations particularly when you were using falling horses that were being trained to fall on the bit are trained and that's the difference with a with, with a you know you're not just throwing horses to the floor however in this particular production in 1965, they are still using a device known as the Running W. Now, the Running W is a device whereby the rider, the stunt rider, is not in control of the horse falling. Later on, there was a thing developed called the Toe Tapper, which, was, which gave control back to the stuntman who was riding the horse it also allowed for the horse's fall to be tested and trained in advance so there were a number of horses worldwide uh, in every country that were toe tapper horses they were familiar with falling using this device and as we've seen before on a number of occasions, the horse, the, 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 the rider will go down to the right or left hand side and pull a lever or pull a rope or something that will bring the horse's two legs together at the front, causing the horse to fall in a designated area. This designated area will have been, you know, scouted for safety and everything taken into consideration. But in this instance, this is not the case. And the running W is a primeval piece of kit which takes away the responsibility takes away the control of the stuntman so the leather there's leather hobbles around the horse's leg and from each hobble on the front from each hobble is a wire the wire comes up the horse's uh, legs over his shoulders they cross over the shoulders go underneath the saddle and then in the distance are fixed to a stationary point a stake in the ground um, a tree a vehicle something stationary the length of cable is only depicted on the basis that by the time they get to the end of that cable they will be doing at least 20 to 25 miles an hour and then the physics takes over and the pull and the pull that happens in the distance there's no more tension there's no more cable to feed out 
and everything comes to a standstill. And in this instance, what happens is the horse's legs are pulled from under it and the horse will fall. Now, understandably, this was outlawed. They don't use this anymore. They stopped using it in the late 70s, believe it or not. The toe tapper was then not used and, and, and removed in the late 80s. So it took a very, very long time for the Humane Society and for stuntmen to realise that this wasn't a viable way of being able to bring horses down on film. Um, bringing horses down by the bit, training horses, and again by the bit I mean you're holding the reins, you pull one side of the reins, for instance, uh, I pull the right rein, and the horse then comes round and round and round and gets to the point of no return, and then falls to its left, and similarly on the other rein as well. So they are trained to do that, and uh, you know you take many, many precautions as is possible. The stirrups, for instance, they're not metal. They are leather, and they fold up soft leather, which folds up so when the horse does lie down on it, there's no injury to be, t to be, to be given to the horse. So all of that is taken into consideration and these horses are trained and uh, are very important horses particularly when you see a sequence whereby you'll have a horse um or oh, i don't know uh galloping from over there um there's gunfire all over the place they then jump that car get to over that part over there and then there's uh the rider is shot and the horse falls and now what you'll probably have is three horses doing that. Very rarely will you find a horse that is capable of doing everything. You'll have one horse which is running from that part to that part and is used and trained for noise. You know that if there's explosions going on, there's gunfire going on, loud noises. Animals don't like loud noises. But you can train uh, horses to be accepting around noises, particularly if it's of short bursts and for the purpose of a scene where it's only going to go from here to there. So that's the first part. The jumping of the car, that'll be a separate horse, that is good at jumping. And a car is a very unusual object. It doesn't look like a fence. It doesn't look like a hedge. It's a car. It's got a wheel here. It's got a roof. There might be people in it. You know, all of these things taken into consideration. But the horse has to jump the vehicle and then get to over here and then there's the gunshot and the horse falls. Well, that'll be a separate horse. And if you have horses of similar colour, well, they can be they can be painted slightly and adapted to look more like this horse or even the hero horse, which will be the horse that the actor will ride. So there's a whole bunch of bits and pieces. What we have in these sequences here for Genghis Khan is you have mass horse falls um you'll have i don't know 50 100 horses coming towards camera and in the middle will be six or eight horses which are attached to the running w now that taken into consideration that means that those horses need to have a little a little more wide berth because they're going to fall there's going to be the stuntmen will be falling from the horses it's not going to be you know it's not going to be a pleasant watch also bob simmons was very you know very very keen on the fact that he has to go to the director and the second unit guy and say you're getting one take here there's no second take regardless of what you think this production is worth or what the value of this shot is worth you get one and by that i mean that this particular horse fall where we have you know what 50, 100 horses in this shot and those horses that are going to be falling, you need to cover that from five different camera angles if you're to use it again. And luckily, that's what happened. They used a number of these horse falls again and again. It's just that they edited it from different angles. So they've got a number of different cameras running, massively important. And Bob Simmons was aware that that was going to be the case. So now that you are aware of uh, of the background to this picture and the distinct possibility that there are going to be some of you who will be disturbed by what you are about to see, um, that's the, uh, the, the little uh, disclaimer at the start to say, yep, that's, that's how it was back then. 
this no longer happens. Um, it has been outlawed. And nowadays, a great thing I posted uh, on Twitter the other day, uh, which was the mechanical falling horse. You may have seen, I started seeing them uh, in the movie Braveheart. Um, the horse is, uh, it's, it's mechanical. And by that, I mean that it is on rails. To get it from that point to this point here, it will travel along a track. And then at the end here, it will tip itself up or it will fall. The rider will be in full costume. It will be carrying a lance or whatever, a sword, a rubber tipped sword, whatever the deal is. Um, and it will get from here to here. It will fall with other horses around it, i.e. there will be other horses around it. It will be the one that, that takes the fall, that takes the punishment. But it is a rubber horse and it is mounted on a track. That's one thing that they, they started doing and have done in subsequent years. So uh, realistic was that, in fact, uh, in that particular sequence. And I think they did two or three falls using... Um, mechanical horses or, or uh, rubber horses in this instance that the Humane Society weren't sure and had to go in and verify um, you know and the complaints that were received from the public when they saw the sequence in the movie very very interesting to, to think that the, you know we, we were fully aware that that was what was going on and yet the the audience weren't convinced of it because it looked so realistic well that's the purpose of the of the situation if you can make it look realistic well you've done your job uh, nowadays of course they use that they can also can put in cgi horses full stop cgi has now got to a stage where you you don't need to have horses there um the performer could be on um a, a blue screen or a blue piece of apparatus which travels to a certain point and then will move in such a way that the stunt performer will uh, fall and around that particular piece of footage the um, CGI tech whiz kids will put in um, a horse they will CGI an animal in and the fall looks realistic um, so there are other ways of doing it now much more time consuming possibly but obviously from a safety point of view it is prevalent that uh, that safety is everything so on the strength of that that's what happens now but back in 1965 the action on this particular movie looked like this so here we go with genghis khan genghis khan um action sequences bob simmons and uh, we start with a piece of action that involves omar leaping from the waterfall about 50 feet I would say Alf Joint doing the high part here look good man with heights falling away from the hydraulic action of the falls itself turns up again a bit later on Ooh, after being hit with a there he is Oy, and then a nice fall out into a concealed bed Alf joint again up there on the tower as this flaming mass comes to him, jumps over the top of it. This is Bob Simmons doubling Omar Sharif. There, to the best of my knowledge, there weren't any women stunt women working on the picture. I suspect that that is a uh, a Yugoslavian stunt man hanging onto the back after shaving his legs for the purpose of this exercise presumably but bob he's in the saddle but bob isn't in the saddle he's right in front of the horse's mane number of different horse falls mostly wire jobs later on in respect of uh, the running w plenty of great horsemen the the um the yugoslavian guys are just magnificent Here's the first batch. We'll take a look at some of these. I mean, they are brutal. Boom, down you go. Let's look at it in slow motion. He's not a, He's not bringing that horse down himself. That is the running W. Those legs, look at the legs in the back and the front legs. They're lifted automatically. Horse goes straight to the ground. And the stuntmen are passengers. More 
mass ones here. Take a look at this next one as well. Look at the, it's a, like a prepped area. The area has been prepped. You see the horse's front legs come up. That's because there is a fixed point off in the distance where they are attached to. I changed it years later, but another example here. See, horse is falling. Front legs come up. There's the first one. There's the second one. Down they go. And made extra spectacular by the stunt performers diving from their mounts. But um, there's just no control over that whatsoever. That is going from 25, 30 miles an hour to nothing. You are stopped immediately. The G-forces must be extraordinary. And consequently, a great many horses were injured, uh, some tragically killed uh, because of the nature of this particular out piece of equipment. Majority of these, these ones here, these are all um, horses falling on the bit, being brought down by the rider. That's a saddle fall. Look at the amount of, I mean, it's just huge amounts of horses in one place. So you have falling horses in there with horses that are used to crowds, noises, bodies falling around the place, bodies being dragged from horses, horses being brought down. See the horse's head turning all the way around. That's the, the, the rein being pulled, being able to get that done. Ripples of shots. Special effects team going to town here. Again, explosions and horse falls. Ripples of more explosions. And down they go. Look, masses of them. 15, 20 in one go, possibly. All cabled off to a certain point. Horses taking the brunt of these. Wow, look at that one. Head over heels. Just remarkable. Um, again, later on, the toe tapper is brought in at a later stage. Look here. So watch very carefully. You'll see the point of no return. The explosion will go, and the horse's legs are gone from under him there. Angle of the horse changes, and then it gets to a certain point where no more forward traction. Bang, gone. The only thing moving forward is the rider, which means that the horse is tethered. There is nowhere else for it to go. Now, with the toe tapper, the rider is responsible for pulling the horse at a certain point, And there is a great deal more control. This is no control whatsoever because it's, it's physics. You're traveling at a certain point. You then come to a stop at a certain point. G-force takes over and um, trajectory is no longer an option. Horses falling and falling on riders here because of the incline and certain of these banks and the, the, the sequences and the amount of people in one shot. Remarkable stuff. Whenever you look at a shot, you see look, horses everywhere. horse falls there's one there's that, that this white horse though way right over the top lands on top of somebody else another one there so rules and regulations although you know they don't want to cause any concern as far as safety is concerned but the safety measures back then were considerably less than they are now this is the big standoff between Stephen Boyd and Omar Sharif, the two leads in the picture. You get the first W coming up. Once they are prepared, they come along because they've got to collect. Have they got to run at something and collect? Yes, they have. The, the, um, he rides out in the middle. These stakes are placed. There we are. Look, there's the spears. They've got to run, gallop for the spears and collect them. Right, got mine, got mine. Go off in the opposite direction. 
and then turn a bit like a joust no tilt on this occasion they come straight down watch what happens with the white horse whack and there again a w there's the legs come up and down goes the horse rider and all again these are the yugoslavian stunt boys they are responsible for all of the horse falls in this picture brutal as many of them appear and then there will be a pickup shot of the horse being remounted which of course is filmed later on goes back over up gets the horse and of course it's uh, it may not be it's not the same horse it'll be a different horse it's not a falling horse that's the hero horse off they go again at each other contact out the side door everybody looking a bit weary they're still remounting their horses and it's a brutal sequence you know these two men fighting for the death um again the the choreography has to be of such that you have to be in control of your horse and acting at the same time of course he's now bringing him over look the horse being brought down on the bit horse then runs away we're now down to one horse over camera angle here you've got a similar shot in just a moment where boyd's horse is brought down as well here push 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 drag that there you see brings the rein over and down he goes and it is hand to hand battle here until the final blow is struck but the purpose of this i mean the story itself it bases itself down to these two men fighting against each other and yes you know these two guys have worked very hard on the choreography and they're trying to remember what happens next and bob simmons would have been responsible for teaching both of them the moves in this particular sequence in this particular shot but it is not as simple as that and of course a huge proportion of the action of this picture is down to falling horses how those horses look how the action looks on screen the size of everything the trailer depicts it as the biggest one of the biggest stories ever told one of the biggest action films ever shot at the time well maybe that was the case um but they they are you look at the you know they're doing a lot of blood and gore here syrup possibly possibly syrup we flipped over onto his back and this is where the final blow is dealt genghis khan won rest of the world nil and here are some behind the scenes footage of those yugoslavian extras there's bob bob simmons running through the routines showing them how to use the swords He's got a, got his work cut out. Got a lot of these guys who are who've come in, and then you've got a lot of horsemen. You've got a lot of horses, and uh, you maybe get a better idea of the you know all these horses brought in on mass for the purpose of these sequences. Um, the film simply wouldn't work without the extraordinary crew and uh, the amount of horses that uh, that were there these are shots of the uh, special effects team rigging those explosions director taking a ride out to see what's going on and how they can create those scenes and make them look spectacular the ripple effects that they get they are look they look pretty good on the big screen. They look pretty good on the small screen, to be honest with you. But um, 
these the detonators and, and flashbangs are put in certain places, allowing for the best coverage of all of these shots. Uh, so all of the externals were done in Yugoslavia. Um, interiors, I think, were filmed in Berlin, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there was uh, some studio work done there for the interiors of the... Um, palaces and uh, all the all the inside shots but of course the cameraman on horseback as well this is long before the days of drones or long before the days of the pencil cam or the lipstick cam as it was referred to uh, small and could be placed anywhere and all of those drones a uh, thing of the uh, a thing of imagination it was uh, still a case of having a chopper flying above the action and being able to catch all of that um, again you've got to have horses that are happy with noise and happy with loud noise helicopters provide one hell of a loud noise if you're not used to it um, and when you've got masses of horsemen all arriving at a certain point at a certain time the screams going on the shouts look at the size of that that's all horses look unbelievable production itself was remarkable um, in comparison to today it didn't cost that much but that's the shot in the sky which presumably will then cue everybody to start riding in the helicopter shot as it tracks along with everything else all the horses with the stunt riders there it is there's the helicopter panning along the guys doing a very good job of keeping everything just in shot at the right time and uh, they prepare for these locations the horse falls everything in the wreckies particularly they have to find places where these horses can fall i mean although you know we've the methods are such that uh, it wouldn't have made the blindest bit of difference but the, the area the ground is prepped prior to them landing and it's old school cinema you know you've got a director who is in charge of all of that the director is king on on uh, film sets like this we saw some of these shots made it to the final cut Again, horses everywhere, swords everywhere. Didn't seem to be a great deal of rubber swords either. I know there would have been in certain cases, but they looked a bit too real for my liking. And there's explosions going off. And uh, all around the action... but certainly an extraordinary picture to have worked on. So, there you go. Genghis Khan from 1965, and um, Brutal does not describe those falls adequately enough. Uh, the Running W um, was an extraordinary piece of kit. Um, and again, it, everything kind of moves on prior to that prior to the running w in the early in the silent days of cinema they would have pits the horses would fall into pits they'd have a ground crew out who would dig a hole in the ground some i don't know three or four feet deep and they would cover it with sand grass whatever it was branches birch horses would run 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 boom fall down the hole and that would be the horse fall. The explosion would go off in the background, and boom, the horses would fall to the fall to the ground. So you know, outlawed stuff. Um, but nowadays, it is much better. Um, the Humane Society do an extraordinary job, as we know. Uh, animals of all kind are uh, very, very important to everybody, and particularly in uh, movies of this nature. So. Um, 
bear that in mind when you look at the footage it was a very long time ago and we have moved on these are not happening anymore uh, but extraordinary action important for you to see i think and to understand better and hopefully you will do so uh, next time we will return oh we're going to return with something a little special i'm not going to tell you anything about it just yet i'll tease you during the course of next week uh with a little something here and a little something there uh don't forget to check out the pod dojo network who are responsible for all of the podcasts and uh well until next week bye for now (laughs) 